I'm Anneli Brunis Hake. I am a Swedish teacher and I'm the founder of Swedish Made Easy and Language Teacher Rebels. I'm also the author of Teach Yourself Complete Swedish as well as The Language Teacher Rebel, a guide to building a successful online teaching business. Super excited to be here and be a part of this conference. I'll be here in the end for some questions and answers. So thank you very much for, for being here with me and I hope you enjoyed the talk. I'm going to be talking about the relationships uh, that you form as a teacher when you teach online. And in this talk, I want to um, just highlight some of the relational aspects of teaching online. Um, often, I think when we when we think about teaching online, there's a lot of focus on the tech and and how it works and what platforms to use and so on. Um, but I just wanted to um, to really think a little bit more about the actual relationship aspects and the interactions that you have with the students. March and April 2020, a period of time that few of us will ever forget. And I think for many teachers, uh, including language teachers, uh, this was a time of quite a lot of stress, as many people kind of frantically uh, try to adapt to this new environment, try to move um, their resources, their materials and their teaching online. It wasn't quite like that because I've been teaching online for well over 10 years now. Um, but I did see a lot of uh, language teachers um, in forums online kind of frantically trying to figure out the, the tech and the IT and which platforms to use and how to kind of navigate this this digital infrastructure and how to best use it in, in language teaching. And the tech and the IT is one thing, of course, um, is the, the, the how to. Um, but I wanted to talk a little bit more about the actual relationships that you form online as an online teacher, um, especially when you teach one to one or in very small groups, because this is something that I've been thinking about ever since I, I started teaching online or oh, well perhaps a couple of years uh, after starting teaching online uh, when I experienced the kind of relationships that you form and that led me to, to think how is it that you can form such uh, sort of strong and intimate relationships with somebody uh, who you've never met in a sense never been in the same room as maybe someone who's who's in a different city or, or even a different country um, and this is also something that uh, friends or people that I meet when I say what I do um, they often ask about this so, so this question has been on my mind for quite a long time and it's something that I find absolutely fascinating and the more I've been thinking about it for me, it comes down to three things. Firstly, the intense focus that you have on each other in this kind of environment. Secondly, the personal space that is created and what that entails. And thirdly, also the distance, which in a, a kind of paradoxical way uh, can create a safe space. So when you're teaching someone online, um, they might have one or two or three hours a week or something like that. Um, most of my students have one to two hours a week. And, um, and the interesting thing here is that 
you might be their most regular contact, the person that they spend the most regular time with, perhaps outside of, of, of their family or whoever they live with. Um, so they might in fact spend more time with you, speaking to you as a teacher than you know, their parents or their siblings or, or, or friends even. Um, and it might be the same for you um, as a teacher. Um, so there is a, a real intensity and I, I find um, when I've had students for, for several years like this, um, you build up this relationship which is, which is so intimate and, and um, to the point where, you know, if, you, if they go on holiday, for example, or they're, they, they're away for a couple of weeks, I find myself missing them. I find myself wondering how they are. It might be that I've, you know, I, I, I know about a, a difficult situation or, or maybe something that's about to happen at work or in their private life. And I'm, I'm, I'm wondering how they are and, and I can't wait for them to come back and, and update me so I can find out how things have, have been for them. Um, so there is there is this the sense of regularity and the intense focus, which I think is also amplified by the fact that you are sitting and you are looking at each other constantly through the screen um, in perhaps a different way than than you are looking at each other. If you were in a classroom, you don't have the same intensity of eye contact. In terms of personal space, of course, when you're doing video conferencing, you have your device with you. The students have their device with them, um, which means that, you know, you can have lessons uh, where the student is at home in different rooms of the home, uh, in um, at work or, or perhaps they're, they're away traveling. I've had students who've been in bed in the bathroom because that was the only uh, place where they could uh, be alone from away from the noise of the kids for example uh, you know or in their their workspace in the in the office um, and and from hotel rooms and so on so and what this does is it gives you as a teacher glimpses into their their private lives their their everyday environments and uh you know, I've 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 had uh, mothers or fathers looking after children, feeding them, and um, you know I've met uh, students, pets, partners, work colleagues, um, children, and so on. So you you do get a real insight into their their private lives, their everyday environments, in a way that you you can't get. Um, if you're teaching in a classroom environment where both of you are meeting in the same space. And finally, the distance that exists in a way where when you are not in the same space, that can actually paradoxically create a bit of a safe space, I've noticed. So for my students, I only exist in their laptop or in the computer. Um, I, I don't really operate in their space otherwise. So I've had students telling me kind of secrets, perhaps that, you know, uh, I've had students telling me that they were planning to propose to their partner or, or that they were pregnant and things like that. So things that for whatever reason they didn't want to share with their friends and family, perhaps just yet, um, they uh, felt that they could share with me because I was not in the circle. I, there, was, there was no risk that they were going to meet me in town or anywhere in their environment. So I was considered safe. And related to this, I think there's another point that's really interesting, which is perhaps not specifically related to online teaching, but it kind of feeds into this, uh, which is that I've noticed that speaking about kind of difficult things uh, in a second language, in the language that you're learning, can actually be quite therapeutic to sort of uh, come closer to and, and sort of naming any emotions or situations that are perhaps emotionally difficult to, to kind of um, approach them from a, oh, what's the verb form of this in Swedish? What's the noun for this in French or whatever? Uh, that can be a way uh, to, to sort of work through some emotions. Uh, which can be really liberating and therapeutic for a student. 
And some teachers might find uh, the idea of this type of intimacy a little bit difficult, perhaps, um, that they are perhaps afraid that there's not enough kind of hierarchy, maybe not hierarchy, but kind of uh, distance between uh, themselves and their student, that there's this sort of a blurring of the boundary of the roles. Um, but in my experience, and I've uh, taught online uh, for well over 12, 13 years now, this is nothing to be afraid of. It's incredibly rewarding as a teacher and um, for the student, it's also super, super helpful, uh, especially when students struggle with motivation, which of course all students uh, do occasionally. Uh, this is something that sort of anchors them and grounds them that they make makes them want to come back and make makes them feel that there is somebody there listening um so for me it's not about being some kind of psychologist or therapist at all it's just about being a human being and uh, just being there listening to them and I think it is incredibly cool what we can do with digital technology today, how we can form these uh, relationships, of course, across time, but also across space. It's just something that we just weren't able to do a, a decade or two ago. Um, and it is, has been particularly enabled by the digital revolution but I also wanted to say a few things about why I think that this is super significant right now because the way I see it uh, teaching online isn't just about what I call teaching on the beach um, so the idea of the digital nomad and working off your wi-fi and sitting on a beach somewhere nice and just having this geographical flexibility in your work um, that's a nice thing don't get me wrong I do enjoy it very much uh, but for me uh, teaching a language and the idea of kind of language learning across borders is much bigger than that because right now in many places of the world and certainly in the western world we are seeing uh, waves of extremism we are seeing shift to isolationist and protectionist policies um, we're also seeing new physical boundaries between uh, different regions, different countries, and we're seeing the breaking out of established unions. And we can see this as a tension between, on the one hand, um, kind of movements which are around things being global, digital, and, and being connected, and on the other hand, things um, relating to isolationism, protectionism and uh, populism. So regardless of, of where people are on the spectrum, I think we can all recognise that in a globalised world, we have globalised problems, the environment, finance, um, security, health and so on, um, and that these global problems require global solutions. And of course, for that, we need global conversations. And teaching a language, of course, can support global conversations and help people to express themselves. Um, I don't want to uh, become a politician or an activist, um, but I do feel that we as language teachers have a really important role to play here. An exciting thing here is that um, through the digital revolution, through using IT and technologies, we can really connect across borders, across geographical borders, across time zones and so on, to really help and support integration and cultural understanding.
Thank you so much for listening to this talk. Um, if you want to get in touch with me, head over to AnnaLeeHarkey.com. Um, I'll also be here now and I'm looking forward to a question and answer session uh, with you guys. So thank you very much. <laughs>